Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori. We're recording live. My guests are here. Everything's unscripted. I'm going to show you what to look for. Let's get started. Let's take a look at this necklace. It looks like it's gold. It looks like it has a blue stone in the middle of it, and maybe it's a bracelet. Might be a bracelet, but it's on a black uh, background. Hi there. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good. How What's your you? name? I'm Danny. Hi, Danny. From Oregon. Nice to see you. What is this? Is this a watch? Is this it a, is a It is a bracelet. It's a bracelet. Yeah. And it says 18 karat on the clasp. And I was wondering if that means it's all 18 karat. It will depend. Okay. So oftentimes if the clasp is 18 karat, you could have an 18 karat gold. Typically you don't have an 18 karat gold clasp on some piece of junk, you know? <laughs> so that's typical. However, on a piece like this, I would think that the setting would be marked as well. So you see that rondelle in the middle? It usually, that would be marked as well. Tell me the story of this. How'd you acquire it? I got it in an estate sale. I paid $10 for it. It oh, seems wow. to be onyx and um, yeah, that's it. It's and, just, and some kind of gold. Can you get it closer to the camera, please? I'll try. Yeah, you're doing okay. Can you turn it? Yeah, that's close to the camera. Right there is good. Okay, so it looks like what you have is you have a link chain at the bottom, then you have gold small balls try not to move it if you could i am <laughs> i know it's hard so small gold balls right which repeat and then you also have faceted um small it looks like black balls right right are those all do are those the same material as the central onyx piece um they seem to be yes okay so what, what you have is you have some faceted onyx ah okay now a couple of different things. First of all, the central onyx piece and the setting looks like the that, and the setting looks like the piece in fact is um, early to mid 20th century, and it does look like it's 18 karat gold. How do you tell that, Dr. Lori? Well, a couple of ways. When you see 18 karat gold, the better the fineness or the more pure you get toward gold, like toward 24 karat, it has a much more delicate sheen than the 10 karat gold, which kind of looks more like the base metal, okay? So 10 karat gold doesn't look as good as 24 or 18 karat gold as you get higher in the fineness marks. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. And then the contrast between the onyx and then the other gold pieces actually helps the onyx to look much better. You know it's not obsidian and you know it's not a piece of glass that's been faceted. Onyx has a different feel as well. So that's a good thing. Um, not to be confused with other black stones, right? Like jet or obsidian or others. That's onyx. And it looks like onyx because of the shiny nature of it. And you can see that right in that big stone. Yeah. So you said you paid how much? $10. $10 was fantastic for this 18 karat gold and onyx piece from the early 20th century. Value on that piece, $850. Oh my God. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Woo! Thank you so Why? much. Because it's all handmade. 18 karat gold and that setting is all hand done, probably made in Italy all of those individual beads too, which are on that particular piece. Notice the double strand. The double strand also tells you that that piece is early 20th century. So that double strand is very popular in a period known as Edwardian. Your dog isn't very impressed with that, but I certainly am. <laughs> Your dog's in the back kind of scratching and just hanging out. Yeah, but she is. I'm, I'm very impressed with that piece and very happy that you got it for just $10. I am too. Thank you so much. And My I'm pleasure. looking cornflakes. Oh, cornflakes is your question of the day? Okay. Well, okay. I'm glad that you like cold cereal as opposed to hot cereal. And I like cornflakes too. Nice to see you. And thanks so much for um, being with me from Oregon. Thank you. Bye-bye. So when you're looking at, of course, vintage early 20th century jewelry, a couple of the styles will help you. And for any, for any time period, you want to know what 
the highest fineness marks look like. And you want to know also what, of course, the gold looks like if it's 18 karat or 24 karat gold. You want to know what that looks like and get that into the memory banks. If you don't know the marks, I feature them on videos right here on the channel. You can use the binge link, of course, to, in fact, um, watch those videos. And the binge link is easy to find at drlaurieV.com. Go to the specials and shop page, scroll down, go to the red binge link, and it will actually show you my videos in order, the most recent ones first. The other thing about that is I also have a lot of marks that I show you in the videos and on my website about identifying all those different marks that relate to gold. So get on that website and get that information. It's going to help you make money. It's going to help you build a wonderful collection for yourself. So my guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Hang, hold up those objects. Guests from all over. Let's see what they've got. Um, let's see what the brooch looks like. Hey, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you, Lori? I'm good. How are you? What is this? This is a nice piece. Yes, it's a, a Vendome. Is that how you say it? The yeah, it's a Vendome piece. Yeah, Vendome is a very well known um, and marked, easily marked maker, of course, of costume jewelry. Um, can you get a little closer for me so I can see some detail? Oh, all right. So that lovely flower starburst in the middle. And then you have, of course, um, these other elements that look to be um, small, small details all the way around set into the metal. So that's a nice piece. Can we see the back? All right. Right there in the back. Do you see how it looks like a big flower in the middle of the gold tone metal? Yeah. That's yep. very indicative of the 1950s. The okay. 1950s have sort of those flowers. And then literally what they do, it's kind of like what I'm crocheting baby blankets. Mm -hmm. you kind of, they kind of just basically link it using either very thin wires to that armature, okay? Kind of to that little, that little uh, floral design of metal. And then they go through all those holes and that's how they keep everything together on some of the pieces. Um, other elements on these pieces, did you test the, the stones for glass or some other stone? I did not. I didn't know that Van Dome had, uh, I just thought it was costume jewelry. I, I it is, it. It yeah. is costume jewelry. So you can tell that it's glass? I, I felt like it was glass by looking at it, but okay. I just, I didn't even think to test it, actually. Uh, I just, it is, thing. it is. Definitely costume jewelry. It's fine if you don't want to test it. If you're going to resell it, I always say, give them a test. How hard is it? Okay. Tell them it's glass and it was tested okay. because people, people like that as a reselling tip. They like the fact to know you tested it and it's glass. Okay. As opposed to only relying on your expertise, which you do have an expertise to say, hey, I know it's glass, but they'll feel better. A potential buyer with respect to a reselling tip will feel better mm -hmm. if they know you tested it, you know, so... Um, having said that, how much did you pay for this piece? About a quarter. About 25 cents, maybe at a yard sale or an estate sale? Yeah, yard sale, community sale. I but bought a whole load of stuff at, the, at one yard sale. Oh, I see. Okay. So I would say value on that piece is about $50. Okay. Vendome pieces do pretty well based on actual sales records, but it's the style that everybody likes. There's a three dimensionality that we see in 1950s, early 1960s era brooches. They look like they kind of stick out, you know? They're kind of almost a bas relief kind of coming out from what is flat, your, your chest or up here. So basically, I guess that's your clavicle, but basically that's what we're looking at. Um, yes. Having said that, uh, you want to make sure that you are identifying it properly in terms of time period as well. But Vendome, and it's a very clear mark. It's usually a little oval, and it says Vendome right on the back yes. of it. So nice. Good for you. Thanks so much for showing it. Yeah, and my question of the day, cold cereal or hot cereal? I'd prefer cold cereal if I was eating cereal. <laughs> I'm, trying <laughs> to, I'm trying to behave these days. <laughs> I know. You know, cereal can be loaded with sugar, so we have to be careful about cereal, too. Yeah. <laughs> nice Thanks to see so you. My nice pleasure. to see you. My pleasure. Um, yeah, so a lot of things with respect to costume jewelry. If you just say, I know it's glass, what's the harm? You have the Presidium Gem Tester, or you have the Loop, or you have the Diamond Tester. Do a test, make sure you know, and go from there. And of course, if you purchase any of my recommended 
products, which are at my specials and shop page, we get compensation, but you get a recommendation from, of course, an expert in the field. Subscribe to my newsletter. Why do you want to subscribe? Because there's all kinds of information in the newsletter and it's easy to do. It's go to drlaurieV.com, look for the thumbs up free icon, because if it's free, it's thumbs up, right? And then just um, enter your email and we'll send the, the newsletter right to your inbox. It's easy. You don't have to do anything else once you give us your email. All right. So guests galore. Let's see what they've got. Well, that's interesting. We've got a little panda egg there. And then we've got a teapot. Well, let's let's talk about a teapot. What do you think? <laughs> Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. It's Fern. So, Vern, Fern, where are you calling from? Massachusetts. You're calling from Massachusetts? How did you acquire this teapot? It looks like a nice, clean ceramic teapot. It's like brand new. Like brand new. Does the lid move or jiggle? I always want you to jiggle the lids and make sure it doesn't jiggle. I want it to sit there nice and tight. It sits there pretty well. Okay, good. Is there a mark on the bottom? Remove the lid and show me if there's a mark. It, Take your time. Minton. Does it say nothing? Minton. It's a Minton teapot. Well, that's unusual looking so new as it does. Minton, of course, is the great English ceramic firm. And that particular pot, those oval pots are the pots that actually um, many folks in Great Britain prefer. And Minton, of course, along with many of the other great Staffordshire area um, manufacturers, in fact, create teapots of fine bone china. Different from porcelain, bone china has, of course, bone ash. And bone china actually has more of a beige color. If you'll show us the um, other side, if you'll show us the side of the piece, more of a beige color than a white color. Porcelain usually is a little more white. Bone china with the bone ash in with the kaolin and the feldspar is usually a little bit more beige. How did you acquire it, Fern? Well, this was a crazy trip to Savers. Okay, Savers the thrift store? Yes. And Why was I it crazy? I was going down the aisle and I saw um, the teapot and I grabbed it. Okay. And I said, oh boy, if I could find the cream and sugar, because you you know, I always talk about the set. Yes. And I went a little further and I found the sugar bowl. Oh, good. <laughs> and I got so excited. I'm like, I got to keep looking, keep looking. And I found the creamer. Oh my gosh, Fern. And then, no, no, wait, wait. <laughs> I'll wait, what? I walked around, I was at the end of the aisle, so I walked around the end cap and there were the dinner plates. Oh, the dinner plates to the same set in mittens? Yes. Wow, so they didn't put everything together? They just no. put it anywhere. Oh. And then I went a little further and I got the des dessert plates. Fern, come on. And the cups and saucers. Every time I moved a little further, so <laughs> it was the craziest thing. I so, mean, so I, what happened was the guy in the cart, he's pushing the cart with the stuff and he puts one here, he finds a space, he puts one here, he finds a space, he puts one here, he finds it. Oh my gosh, that's funny. But, but luckily there were eight of each of them. Wow. So service for eight of the dinner plates, the cups, the saucers, the dessert plates, the creamer, the sugar, and the teapot. Yes. Right? Yes. All the same, Mark? Wonderful. Yeah. So how much said, did you pay for all of it? Well, I kind of paid up because I was so excited. <laughs> okay. Um, it was about 60. About 60 for all of it? All of it. You probably made, th you probably got something worth 350 for 60. Really? Yeah, you did okay. You did okay. Minton's is a very good name, Bone China. It's also, so it's a decorative, nice pattern. It's not too feminine it's not too masculine it's kind of middle of the road a lot of people will like it when do you think this is from because oh, i i don't think it's all that old i no, think no. it probably dates to the to like the 1970s to the 1990s because every single piece is like nobody has ever touched it well you know people get wedding gifts and then they don't care about it and then it just sits there i remember one of my relatives all the wedding gifts were left in the attic and they were just, they were never touched. And it was like, they were just sitting there. 
and they were new and fine. So a lot of people have that happen or they get something or they buy it or they have an opportunity to buy it and then they just go, well, you know what? I never used it. It's like new. You know, you use the things you like. I mean, how many yeah. times you see me in this red sweater, right? I like it. I wear it. You do the same thing, right? You know how that is. So. Nice. Well, it was crazy. I was like almost sweating going <laughs> down the aisle. You got a little bit of it, sort of like bird seed as you're going around, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, and that's exists. good for good for you, Fern. That's wonderful. Hey, we answer my question of the day: oatmeal or cold cereal? Well, cold. Cold cereal. Nice to see you. I think you'd want oatmeal in chilly Massachusetts, but you know. Oh, it's freezing. <laughs> nice yeah. to see you. Right. Bye, Fern. Oh, funny. But see, as you go, it'll teach you something, you resellers. Look around, you know, look around. And most of you know that. Look around, look up, look down, and try to get into the head of the person who's just trying to find a space and put all of these donated pieces out on the store shelves. So not that easy, not that easy. My guests are here, and they make it easy and a lot of fun. It's good to see all of them. Let's see what they've got. Oops. Take a look at that butterfly. What's that? Is it a butterfly or is it a brooch or what is it? This is a brooch. Hi, what's your name? Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Where are you calling from, hon? <clears throat> Oklahoma. It's nice to see you. So is this a Shriner brooch? It is. Wow. That's a wow piece. That's a wow I, piece. I got so, it at a yard sale. Did you? It, it was originally ten dollars. I got her down to five. There it is. I like that. How did you do it? Tell everybody how you negotiated. What was your <laughs> what was your method to negotiate? Well, she had a lot of stuff, and this was so unusual to me. And uh, I just asked her. I said, "Would you take five? And she said, "Yes." <laughs> excellent, excellent. Is it marked Shriner on the back? It is, and it says New York. It's in a little oval. Can you show us the back? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, honey. Take your time. Nope, I lost it. You're all right. There it is. There That's cute. Perfect. So there's a little oval on the back, and it says Shriner, New York. You'll notice that these pieces of glass have scroll work detail on them. You can see them through here. And then if you'll show us the front again, You can no, also, see, yeah, you know, you're doing great. You're doing great. You can also see the seed pearls. You can see some crystals and you can see the quality of the crystals with the way they sparkle. Crystal sparkles a little bit differently than others. Shriner is a very well-known high-end costume jewelry designer out of New York, active in the middle part of the 20th century, the middle 1900s. So this particular piece that you got for $5 is worth $625. It is an outstanding piece, <laughs> amazing. I have a big collection. Can you hear me now? Yes, it was your, your, you were going in and out. Okay, yeah, I have a big collection. My daughters laugh at me because I love costume slash junk jewelry. This is going to put it to them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That's a beautiful piece. It's a very high-end piece. It's very rare. Many people are looking for that particular Shriner piece. And for $5, you did great. I hope that the channel has been helpful and the videos have been helpful for you to learn what to look for. They have, very much so. Thank you. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. That's wonderful. Great to see her and a great, great example of what you can find out there if you know the names and you know what to look for. I've been telling you and telling you, I want you to learn it. I want you to know it. Shriner is one of those names. So, and of course, I give you lists and lists of those on the videos. So check them out. Check them out. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. I want to see this necklace. I want to see this necklace that is, in fact, it has a, um, a very nice uh, orange colored, I'll call it a amber colored uh, pendant. Hi, what's your name? Gabby. Gabby, where are you calling from, hon? Memphis, Tennessee. Are you calling from Memphis? Yes. Okay. Are you in the music business in Memphis? No. Everybody's in the music business in Memphis, right? 
<laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to see you. What have you got there? It says sterling. I mean sterling. It says sterling on it. Yes. All right, and it looks like you've got a nice piece of amber inside of that sterling too. Yes. Nice. All right, and is it a necklace? Yes. How did you acquire it? Um, I clean houses, empty houses, and people leave stuff, so I just find it there. Hey, Gabby, have we done a video call together before? Yes. Yes. Did. Was it easy for you to book, and was it helpful once you got to talk to me? Yes, it was. Good. I'm so glad, honey. Yes. So you clean houses, and you're able to to uh, take the Go stuff, the or maybe you're paid yeah. that way. It's all different all over the country. And uh, this was one of the pieces. I like this piece very well. And it is, does it hit about here? Yes. Yeah, about there. Okay. So that would mean it's about 24 inches, right? Yes. Maybe 22, 24 inches in this neck of the woods. And it looks like it is a piece, of course, of amber that's been set into sterling. It looks like it's Scandinavian. It's possibly made in Denmark. They're very popular for that link chain. You see that link? It kind of looks yes. like a looks like a bird going downward if you yes. look at the links on the necklace part. Yeah, can you get the links on the necklace part a little closer to the camera? There it is. And down, just go straight down. Straight down. There it is. I want to show those links. Those links kind of look like they actually go downward. They're, so that's typical of Scandinavian design pieces. I would say that piece is probably made in the Baltics with a nice piece of amber as well. Value on how much, so you got it as payment for your work, right? No, okay. just, no they just, you can keep whatever is in the house. It's if in the house, you can just, so it's free. It yes. They're gonna throw it away anyway. Oh yeah. Gosh. You don't wanna throw away sterling, right? Did yeah, you no, recognize like jewelry? You like jewelry, I'm so happy you like jewelry. Keep liking jewelry, it's good for you. <laughs> that piece right there is worth $275, Gabby. All right. That's a okay. very nice piece. Big piece of amber. It's thin. It's thin. It's like a slice of amber, so it's not as expensive as a little, lot of pieces. But then the sterling. It has this little, I don't know if they're diamonds or. Those little pieces are actually, are actually um, malachite, or not malachite, marcasite. They're not diamonds. They're marcasite, okay. and they're very typical. And I would oh. say, again, 275 for that piece. Sterling and it's marked, so it's 925 parts per thousand pure. And then, of course, you've got that necklace too. Thumbs up to, to Memphis there, Gabby. Good for you. Right. My, my question of the day before you run off, cold cereal or hot cereal? Cold. Cold, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, Gabby. Right, Good to see you. you. Congratulations, right. honey. So she's working hard and she's finding some treasures as well. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. Thanks to my guests. I'll see you next time.